Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Innanzitutto, devo comunicarti che da stasera la cara Sol non potrà più occuparsi di te. Anzi, nessuno lo farà più. Questo significa che, salvo complicazioni, Ancora insieme con me per tempi ti farò godere da impazzire. Welcome back. So you've just heard the trailer for The Doll of Satan from 1969. This is this number 61 in the Italian collection series from 88 films. Here is a blurb from the website. After her uncle dies unexpectedly, Elizabeth inherits his sprawling castle. The walls are crumbling, the electricity doesn't work, and there's a fully equipped torture chamber in the cellar. But interior decorators is the least of her worries. A black glove killer haunts the halls at night. And even worse, the tales she's been told about the castle's ghosts might not be stories after all. Part giallo, part modern dress gothic, the doll of Satan is a gloriously ripe slice of Italian horror. Heady with atmosphere and steamy eroticism too, 88 films are very proud to present there's rediscovered genre gem in the UK for the very first time. Special features on this release, and this release has been out less than a month, is a limited edition soft-touched O-card, a limited edition booklet featuring articles You Had Me at Giallo by Andrew Graves and Rustic Terror by Francesco Massacini. There's a fold-out poster, 
HD transfer in the original 166 1 aspect ratio, DTS HD ME 2.0 Italian soundtrack, newly translated English subtitles, an audio commentary by David Deval and Derek Bot Botolo, Botolo? Um, who I believe is a contact on my page. And we've traded conversation back and forward that this is the same guy. Um, and if so, I did check out your commentary and I dug it, but we're going to get to that in a second. My Life with Emma, an interview with actress Erna Schuller. Remembering Franco Potenza, an interview with the film historian Pier Paolo Di Sanctis. Emma and I, portrait by director, screenwriter Mancello Avalone. Avalon, maybe, potentially. A reversible cover art and the special features are region code B disc. So only playable for region B players. Audio DTS HD ME 2.0. Pictures HD 1080p 166.1. The runtime is 90 minutes approx. The language is English, subtitles, sorry, language is Italian, English is subtitles. Certification is 15 and the year of release is 1969. Nine. So, like I say, this was the first time watch for me. I had not seen this one at all. In fact, I was not fully aware of it, but then when we got kind of halfway through the movie, parts started to make sense that I have read about this movie. Um, specifically, it's kind of quantifiable status as a giallo, which it certainly isn't, but I know why it's kind of lumped in there and to be honest with you it's about as jalo as something like all the colors of the dark in fairness so if we're doing that level of jalo then it kind of makes sense here although it is much more of a kind of gothic thriller i would say personally of course the inclusion of the black glove killer leans into that sort of jalo-esque genre classification but i really did struggle to say oh well this is a jalo um Let's get into this one. I suppose without going into the movie, the first thing that is worthy of note, and I'm surprised they don't mention it in the, the blurb here, the alternative artwork on the poster and on the, the O card appears to be the handiwork of one Graham Humphreys, the phenomenal UK-based artist. I would be putting that out front and centre because the album artwork in this one is the tits like genuinely glorious to look at has all his classic work covers all the big set pieces the next thing to note is the original kind of artwork for this one is definitely something that you would assume to be a giallo um because not only is a black glove killer he's a hooded black glove killer so from that point of view that makes sense um this is a bit of a mixed bag if i'm honest um the biggest crime that Doll of Satan has is that it is kind of boring for the majority of its runtime. It's fairly uneventful. It does delve into degrees of kind of wink wink nudge nudge eroticism. Like so you get plenty of female flesh on display and a Lothario kind of appearing in visions to her. But... Um, those scenes are few and far between and you can easily get about 35 to 40 minutes into this film with next to nothing of the supernatural really happening or next to nothing of the black glove killer really happening as well. And I think that's where some of the issues start to arise from this one because by the time the movie really starts to hit its stride which is about the 50 minute to the hour mark of the real the full reveal of the torture chamber and the actual ceremony that's going on and who is behind it, I had already kind of pretty much checked out. There wasn't enough here going on to drag me in. Now, that's not to say that it doesn't have its plus points in its cinematography, but once again, this is Italian cinema in the late 60s. So we have great cinematography here. We have like beautiful stylish people doing beautiful stylish things. The soundtrack is absolutely bitching. And even the, the, the dialogue for the most part isn't cringy. It's surprisingly well held together. I think it's, it's issue here is on the storytelling. It takes too long to get somewhere and it really does feel like someone has wanted to make a kind of gothic horror movie or a gothic thriller. In the, in the classic Italian style, the kind of kind of post Mario Bava uh, wave of kind of gothic thrillers, and then Giallo started to become popular, which it was 
towards specifically towards the end of the sixties, right before Bird with a Crystal Plumage really solidifies its its legacy as one of the more important subgenres of Italian horror. But it kind of feels like that's been almost pieced together. Like this is this we need to add these elements in of this kind of black gloved assailant as a way to appeal to a bigger audience. And as a result of that, never do the two fully marry up. So it kind of feels like a, a kind of hodgepodge of two different styles of storytelling from the from the world of Italian cinema without necessarily fully feeling cohesive as a movie. The aforementioned earlier on All the Colours of the Dark is, is an example of how you do that. So it has all the kind of trippy, heady weir- weirdness of kind of... 70s counterculture with the the elements of giallo that you want with a bit of a kind of satanic bent in there as well kind of cultish flung in but all that weirdly fits together and it aids the movie so the unfolding of those elements within the story makes sense and as a result it feels satisfying when you get to the end the killer release is a bit dumb but it feels satisfying when you get to the end and the case of this one it doesn't feel, it feels like part Jello, part gothic horror. And that's exactly what it is. There are, I mean, well, let's put it this way. When your leading actress has the the full beams on, if you know what I mean, she's wearing some negligee that you can see right through it, and it is a cold room. You know what I'm saying? It is a cold room. I can dial my radio on those nips and that's how cold it is and she's stunning to look at she's a really good actress as well I think that's where I kind of feel like I want to get more invested not because I can see them boobies but you know I want to get more invested with it because I want to see where this is going but it becomes a bit ludicrous the ending is worth the price of admission it gets surprisingly um campy is maybe not the right word but it feels apt it gets surprisingly campy and over the top in a way which kind of justifies the price of admission but the journey up to it is a bit of a slog like I say beautiful cinematography ain't much in the way gore to speak about in this movie we weren't really doing that here yet Uh, we will be doing it like a couple years from now every movie's got big fucking slasher gore this is kind of before the time I was really committing to that in Italian cinema um so that's not there, but a beautiful, I mean, the, the design of the sets is fucking astonishing. I would like to think they did it on set somewhere, like they actually got like a villa somewhere and, and shot those rooms, because it looks like a lot of time and consideration has been spent to capture this kind of, um, almost like, it's not quite gothic, but it's, it's kind of lush and vibrant, sort of, baroque gothic style very 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 nice to look at and it works for the movie for the most part and like i see there's plenty of characters here who are twiddling their non-existent moustaches uh, in a villainous way which kind of makes me laugh it kind of makes me smile and they try and set up at least one red herring in the movie which you can see right through because it's fucking paper thin you shoot peas through it that's how thin it is and it kind of plods along but the biggest issue is about 55 to 60 minutes of its hour and a half runtime, ain't much happening in this movie. It just kind of meanders through exotic rooms, partially dressed women, and oh, is that something ominous in the background? Who is this coming to me in my dreams at night? That sort of level. And it's not until the kind of quote-unquote Satanist shit kicks in at the end that it really starts to find its stride. It's not something I would definitely recommend as one of these ones that if you're really into your gel, you have to tick off. Even for completionists, I would say this one is on the fringes of what I would class personally as a Jello movie. But each to their own. One man's pile of shit, and I'm not saying this movie is, is another man's diamond in the rough. So I, I dare say there will be a kind of an audience out there of people that are interested to check it out. Like I mentioned earlier on, the commentary is kind of where this shines. 
Um, David and Derek work really well off each other and you get a ton of background on specifically giallo genre, uh, but the kind of transitions in Italy uh, and their filmmaking and storytelling of the time with plenty of tidbit bits in here. I switched it on for five minutes at a time because this doesn't have any English language overdubbing, this is all Italian language, so I can have those subtitles on in the background without hearing the characters speak and listen to my commentary over the top in a way which wasn't distracting. Uh, the interview with Erna Schuller is also kind of great. Um, and also the remembering Franco Potenza as well, really, really good. So the special features, a bit above what you would usually get in a disc like this from 88 Farms. And it's not one of their super duper collections that they've been releasing of late, like um, things like So Sweet, So Perverse, got this fancy box set and all those other things that they're doing at the moment beyond disc number 61. So I get the feeling they know it's kind of trashy. They know it's kind of not on the same level as the other movies that got the super duper treatment. And that kind of makes sense for them. And I'm, once again, cool with that. I can tick this one off the list. It's not one I'll be rushing back to any time soon. I didn't hate it. Uh, I'd be loath to say that I loved it. I even really liked it. And as a result of that, I'm coming with a straight down the middle 3 out of 5 for The Doll of Satan.